Welcome back to my channel for an ultra short Hasseblatt episode. And you might want to ask, what is that location I'm in? It looks a little bit like the Roman Colosseum with some fire bolts, um, but it is actually a replica of the Roman Colosseum and it's located in Germany. It's not too far from the Swiss border. I think from Zurich, we have about two hours of driving time here. And it's called in German Europa Park. And I guess the English translation for it is Park of Europe. And uh, for me, if I want to very sloppily translate it, it's probably the German version of Disneyland. And uh, I'm here on the balcony. And what I want to test is here in front of me, you see that replica of the Colosseum. It's actually quite late at night. And I want to see how long can I shoot exposures handheld in order to test for the inboard image stabilization of the Hasselblad X2D Mark II. And uh, here's the camera. I don't have any tripod with me mounted currently, and you can't see it, is the XCD 2.5 55V. That's not an ideal lens for actually handheld exposures because it's not really a wide angle lens. If you would translate the 55V in a full frame equivalent focal length, you would end up at 43 millimeter. And I've actually made a video about it where I figured out that this is indeed the field of view on a full frame sensor of 43 millimeter. So that's a normal focal length and that's not ideal for long handheld exposures, but I want to try my luck nevertheless. And in the specifications, Hasselblad says they provide in the new X2D Mark II, 10 full stops of in-body image stabilization support. I personally believe that probably applies more to wide angle lenses, like let's say the absolutely fantastic exclusive lineup lens uh, of 20 to 35 millimeter. And uh, that's a lens I already shot on the X2D Mark II. But you know, let's try our luck with the 55V. And what I want to do is of course, I want to activate in-body image stabilization. So I go here into the menu, then we go to stabilization and I'm sorry that everything shakes here and it's very dark and I activate the stabilization. I go to stabilization mode normal. And now I want to try my luck and uh, I will go for an ISO of 100, which is a brave decision, I would say, and uh, will in this way underexpose the image. And I uh, want to start with very ambitious, a one second exposure. So let's see here. We have here one second. What is open aperture of f2.5? Let's uh, center the focus point. Let's first of all see if on the display we have everything we need. I think that's fine. And now we have a center focus field here. And uh, let's now try to take that shot handheld. Okay, let's go into play mode. And this is pinpoint sharp. Look at that. I'm going to show you this images later in Lightroom, but one second exposure, no challenge for this camera. By the way, let's go back into play mode. Uh, let's crop in. Let's have a look around. Look at that. Beautiful. As I said, we'll look into this later in Lightroom. If people are in the photo, they will show motion blurriness, but this looks amazingly good for a one second exposure. And bear in mind that I'm holding that camera now wrapped around my iPhone 16 Pro Max uh, far away from my body so I cannot press it to my chest and in any way cheat here. It's fully handheld as you see. Let's challenge this even more. Let's uh, cross the bulb mode, the T mode. Let's go to two seconds. And this is actually quite exhausting for me to have the camera handheld so far away from my body and in between my body and the camera is my iPhone 16 Pro Max. So let's focus here. Okay, this is blurry. And as I said, it's very hard for me to shoot in this way. Let's try to stabilize this. Let me find focus here. Look at that. Now I really concentrate it. Let's go here into play mode. This is still sharp. Look at this. This is a 55 millimeter lens on a medium format sensor. And uh, you saw me struggling at my first attempt, but now it's pinpoint sharp. I see it here in the preview. Of course, we have motion blurriness at two seconds here at people because they will not completely stand still or sit still in this particular case. 
But this is amazing. This is amazing. Look at the detail. As I said, we're going to check this out in Lightroom in a moment. Let me try this again. I think this is the same consistent result. Let's have a look. Look at this. This is sharp, you know. I'm totally blown away by this because this is not a wide angle lens. As I said at the beginning, this is a normal focal length, 43 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. And I have the camera here, very shaky, very loose, far away from my chest. And in between sits my iPhone on a tripod. And uh, I'm shooting this handheld with a two second exposure. Absolutely amazing. I think the next level will probably kill the proposition. Let's go to 3.2 seconds. I don't think I can do this because my arms are already exhausted, to be honest. Let's have a look. Play mode. This is still sharp. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is still sharp. I can't believe it. I swear I never shot handheld and exposure with a 55 millimeter lens. I don't think with any lens at all, three seconds handheld. Look at this. I think this is enough challenge. I closed the chapter here, but now I want to have a look at these images in Lightroom. And this setting here, this tiny little setting, if you go here into stabilization, this is absolutely amazing. And I don't think that Hasselblad is over promising here because if I can shoot handheld with a 55V lens, up to three seconds, I can very likely do it up to four or five seconds with the very, very well done and super sharp and super crisp 20 to 35 millimeter lens in the exclusive lineup of Hasselblad lenses. So this is absolutely amazing. And again, forgive me the bad footage here. Everything is a little bit fuzzy because it's very dark. My iPhone 16 Pro Max cannot capture this well. So we'll switch now to Lightroom on my MacBook. That will look much better. But this is an amazing proposition of an in-body image stabilization I have here in my hands. Absolutely fabulous. And you watched it live. Look how shaky this is. I'm probably here 35, 40 centimeter away from my body and my chest. And I nevertheless was able to manage these handheld shots with a three second exposure. Amazing. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so, subscribe, hit the notification bell and support my work. Many thanks for that. All right, here are the five images I shot in Lightroom. I've not touched any slider, no post-processing, but I will make one of these images pretty afterwards. So this is the first one, one second exposure, widest open f2.5, ISO 100, full resolution, out of camera image and uh, let's crop in by 100%. Let's have a look here how this looks like. This is pinpoint sharp. Look at that, really good. The focus was sitting here are those people. They're in the shadows. We'll get them a bit more exposure later on. And uh, that looks good, right? There is really nothing to complain. This image is sharp, handheld about 40 centimeter away from my body. And uh, that is just amazing because a one second exposure already helps you a lot. If you have lost your tripod, if you have forgotten your tripod, if you don't carry a tripod at all, it's already a big help. Next one, two seconds exposure. That was the first one and you saw in the live recording that I messed this one up. It was just too shaky with my hands. I couldn't hold the camera straight, firm and sturdy. And uh, you see this is blurry. So here I messed it up, that didn't work. But the next one worked. If you remember the live recording just a few minutes ago, and here we have sharpness and crispiness and a very nice image. Motion blurriness at the people, but this is a sharp image. And even if there would be a little bit, a tiny little bit of blurriness, I can in post-processing correct this. But this one here is sharp enough. I'm happy with the result and the outcome. Let's go to the next one because you saw me shooting a second one in order to confirm that this is really possible. I always try several of these images, so I took a second two second exposure. Again, widest open at f2.5, ISO 100, and this is sharp again. Look at that. You see here the engravings in the wall. Looks good. You can correct this a little bit, but this is sharp enough to be used as an image. And then my highlight, of course, the three second exposure. 
lights are totally overblown now, even at an ISO of 100. And uh, let's have a look here. I think this is still good. Look at that. I think with this image, I could work. It's not blurry at all. And I'm going to do the math in a moment what this means in terms of full stops, but it looks good. I think this is fine. What we also should do is look a little bit at the boundaries here because Hasselblad in their footnote on 10 stops EBIS talks about the boundaries versus the center of the lens and the frame, but this looks good. I have absolutely no issue with that. So three second exposure, actually to be precise, it's 3.2 seconds at f2.5 and ISO 100, and we get a nice and clean image. Very good, I'm totally impressed by that. Let's quickly do the math. The being on the safe side, rule of thumb would say one divided by two times the focal length is the shutter speed you should have to really being safe that there are now blurriness, shakes, vibrations, what have you in the camera. So we have a 55 millimeter lens. Let's be generous. Let's say we start the sequence with one over 100, then one stop is one over 50, two stops is one over 25, one over 13, one over six, one over three, 0 0.6 seconds, 1.2 seconds, 2.4 seconds, and still it worked for me with 3.2 seconds. So we are talking here about more than eight full stops of gain with my 55V XCD lens. And uh, that clearly was maybe not even the end of the story. I could have probably tried a four, five or six second exposure. I was just tired and didn't want to go that path. The last chapter in this little video here is about getting the 3.2 second exposure a bit more pretty. And that's what I did here. You see on the left hand side before, you see on the right hand side after, and this looks now much better. We have straight lines, uh, we have information in the shadows revealed and so on and so on. Let me go to the single image view here. And if we look at that, this is sharp. It's sharp and crisp, it looks good. Of course, where we see groups of people, we have motion blurriness like here, but that's totally normal, but it is a good image. I really like it, information in the shadows. I will talk in a video in a couple of days about my first dynamic range testing of this new Hasselblad X2D Mark II. And again, you will be surprised what's possible. But this in-body image stabilization testing was first of all, a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, it's also revealing that Hasselblad did not exaggerate with their statement in the specifications that we talk here about 10 stops, full stops of in-body image stabilization. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.